Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace of the Vision Ethics Institute dropping in on you for this morning's uh, Five Minutes of Fire segment. Um, before I get started on Five Minutes of Fire, uh, I want to remind you guys that now is the time to uh, order your copy of Critical Mass, The Phenomenon of Living Life at the Next Level. Um, this book is book number 20 for me. It is a culmination of 30 years of study, research, direct engagement of working with other people and helping them. What I've done in my life and the working and observation, uh, observation of uh, extremely successful people that I've studied and had the chance to work alongside um, over the course of the last 30 years. I mean, I've gone in depth. Uh, yes, I was uh we were supposed to get it out at the beginning of this month, and I wasn't done. And I decided that uh, I was going to put more into it. I was going to make it a little deeper. And what I did with the book is I made it modular instead of linear. Uh, what that means is a lot of books you read are linear, meaning that you have to start at the first chapter and you have to read straight through to get the gist of what the book is delivering. Uh, I made my book modular. You can start anywhere in this book. And if you read a segment in this book, you're going to get something out of it. Uh, you're going to revisit some principles with this particular concept uh, of writing, but it's going to send a message home. There are some truths in this book that I want to make sure you get. And so I wrote it modularly. Just last night, I added an entire chapter. And what I did is uh, when I decided, no, we're not going to release it yet. I want this book to be the best thing I've ever put my hands on. Uh, as far as what I've published in papers and studies and whatever, it was important for me to do this. And uh, those of you who know me know I'm extremely thorough. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to add an entire new section that's going to talk and visit the world of uh, quantum physics and how it relates to the human mind. And then we're going to connect it to how that works to bring about the law of attraction in the universe and why the law of attraction works. So there's an entire new section in the book that didn't exist last week that's dealing with the law of attraction, how it works, not some mystical idea, but actually how it works, how it's not simply an idea or concept, philosophy or a metaphysical discussion, but an actual universal law of physics. And I cover it in a way that makes it uh, exo uh, exoteric, meaning that it's easy to understand, uh, in lay terms, uh, but I break it down in detail because I want you to see how your thoughts are impacting your life, how your life is literally following a path that your thoughts are laying, and I go into great detail, but you can order the book now. It's uh, at a discounted price during pre-order. Uh, the link is up there in the, in the description box. Get the book, order the book. I guarantee you that you will change your life. If you only find one of the hundred of hundreds of principles that are put in this book and you take it and you make it yours, you will see the change in your life. That's how powerful these principles are. Anyway, five minutes of fire. Let's go. Um, there's so many things that uh, I've been fortunate enough through hard and diligent work. I don't believe in luck. I don't believe uh, in luck. I believe that if you're going to talk about luck, I, I believe the luck, luck chances the prepared. In other words, luck is not really luck. Luck follows the person who puts the work in. Luck follows the person who gives time to what they want. Luck follows the one who says, I will refuse not to get where I'm attempting to go. So it's not luck. It's fortune that is associated with the effort, the energy, and the commitment that you apply to anything. It's not the most talented. It's not the one with all the resources. It's not the one born with a silver spoon in the mouth. Matter of fact, I can tell you out of all the people I've studied, out of all the people that I've patterned myself after, after all the people that I've allowed to be mentors in my life, absolutely none of them came into this world with a silver spoon in their mouth. I don't go looking for them. They're out there. But what I can tell you, there are some silver spooners out there who still live comfortable, who are considered successful. But every last person that I've studied has surpassed them having with them having a head start. Why? Because you cannot supplement. I mean, you cannot... Uh, Ignore hard work. Your work ethic is going to uh, be the determining factor in what you put in. But let, let's talk about how work ethic works, because we live in a microwave society. 
and in that microwave society, instant gratification is the order of the day. I want to be able to go out and say, I want something. I want to be able to take a couple of steps, do a couple of things, and then it happens. And so when it doesn't happen, I immediately put that down. Obviously, it's not for me. I tried it. It didn't work. I'm going to move on to something else. And so you've got these capricious mindsets that jump from one place to the other, constantly trying to find success. And they don't understand that success is a part of the compound factor. And, and what's the compound factor? Well, in studying and, and, and learning finance over the years, I've studied some of the great minds. Uh, probably at least the top 75 most successful people in finance over the last hundred years. Uh, and the one thing that is common, while they have different investment strategies, different building techniques, and how they build their foundation and build up their edifice of financial success, there are a couple of things that are common. One of the things that absolutely stands out with every last person you talk to, even those alive today, the Ray Dalios, the David Swansons, the uh, Warren Buffetts. When you talk to them, who a man, they say that the most missed and underused and misunderstood element of building wealth is compound growth. How you invest in something that produces a consistent income over the course of the years, but it's compounded, meaning that your interest becomes your principal and it grows over time is so significant that most people miss that opportunity. They get started late. And the earlier you get started in compound growth, the more you get. There is a, uh, the mathematics says that I can take two brothers that are twins. One decides at the age of 18 that they're gonna put $1,000 a year, or uh, whatever, however much, a month or whatever, into uh, an interest-bearing account that grows. Uh, I'm not really into uh, static accounts are more into investments that produce. I love the S and P um, as a compound mechanism. Also, the Vanguard uh, uh, Vanguard uh, group also has a, a what's known as an index uh, index funds, or which are passive mutual funds uh, that basically take the top 500 companies uh, that are performing on the uh, on the exchange and group them as one big group, and then we mirror the performance. I don't want to get too much into that. But anyway, when you invest in that, it's going to produce um, a certain percentage on average every year. Um, you're going to have a couple of rough periods along the way, but that's how you win in true investment is you find performance and you stick with them through the ups and the downs. It's not in trading that you win. Trading will get you some good stuff sometimes, but it also costs you. Uh, you haven't experienced a loss until you sell. And so in the selling is where you lose a lot because if you find a good performer, you stick with it, you got it. So anyway, I want to I want to connect this to how you're performing in life. So look, uh, I'm going to move on. Look, so in Compound, you take the brother who gets in at 18. The other brother says, no, nah, man, I'm going to just go out here and do my thing. So the brother gets in, the brother who gets in at 18 only does it for 10 years, from 18 to 28. Then they stop, but they leave the money there. They don't add anything else to it after the age of 18. Now, at the age of 40, the other brother decides, you know what? I'm going to do it, man. Your portfolio is really growing, and it's just sitting over there. I'm going to do it. So he starts at 40, and he goes all the way to 60. He puts in double the amount that his brother put in over the 20 years, but at the time that they pull that money and start to uh, use it for their retirement at 65, the brother who started at 18 and only put in 10 years versus the brother who started at 40 and put in 20 years, has more than three times more, thinking about the average performance of an index, which is around anywhere from 8.2 to 9.2 on average per year. Uh, over the last, I mean, like since forever, since we started looking at indexes. So, you know, uh, it's been as high as over 10. Uh, so what, what, what we get is we find that compound growth is powerful. Uh, it works for you and it produces a passive income ongoing. So what, what happens is, though, when he first started, he didn't start with what he ended up with. He didn't start with the millions that he ends up with. He started with uh, $1,000 or $100 or whatever he decided to put in in whatever increments. Uh, it reminds me of Theodore Johnson. Theodore Johnson was a guy who worked for UPS all his life way, way back when, when salaries weren't that I think the most he made in any year was $14,000. But he knew a person who was wealthy that told him if he was willing to sacrifice some of his upfront money 
into investing in his future that he would retire wealthy. And he did it. He took 20% of his earnings and he only earned 14,000 a year, but he invested in compound growth. He retired at a worth of $72 million. That's the power of compounding. But he didn't have a whole lot and he wasn't putting a whole lot in at any given time. What was he doing? He was building. He was compounding. He was building brick by brick by brick by brick. That's the same way you build your success. You build your success brick by brick by brick. And that's what we lose. We don't have the work ethic. We don't have the staying power. We don't have the consistency and the endurance to build brick by brick. We get out there, we try something, it doesn't work. We get out there, we take a couple of steps back, we quit. We get out there and we get a couple of people telling us what we stand to lose. Let me tell you something. You, you, Yes, anytime you get out there and you decide you're going to accomplish something, you stand to lose something, you don't gain anything without having a risk of losing something. That's just the way the universe operates. If you want to gain something, you're going to have to take a risk of losing something. Here's the problem. Most of you really... Retreat back into the corner of comfort anytime that there's a challenge or anytime you feel like you stand to lose anything of any significance, you, tr you retreat back to the corner. What happens? Yes, you eliminate that risk for the most part. You're, you're not going to be putting up uh, possibly losing this or possibly getting laughed at or possibly uh, uh, getting ridiculed. or po All of those things that you stand to risk by stepping out there and going after something huge, you, you don't risk it anymore. You're back in this place. Is the problem. The moment you stop risking the things you're afraid to lose, you also lose the, the, the opportunity or the risk of winning. You can't win if you ain't out there in the game. You can't gain ground if you're not there, out there in the game. You can't become great or successful or phenomenal if you're not out there in the game. You got to look at the compound fact factor. Stop looking for the quick fix. Stop looking for the quick win. Stop looking for the home run become that person that builds what you're building, that edifice of success, that edifice of wealth, that edifice of relational prosperity, that edifice of high impact uh, in the world around you. Stop, you, you build it brick by brick, action by action. Set back, move forward, set back, move forward, move forward, move forward, set back. That's a part of the process. That's a part of the journey. Your journey to success is not a straight line. It is not a constant progression. You operate on a continuum in this universe in which you're moving forward sometimes and you get pushed back. You get knocked off, of course. You have to recalibrate and realign. That's how you work. You just get into it. I posted something earlier today. How bad do you want it? Because if you don't want it bad enough that you're going to take the ridicule, you don't want it bad enough that you're going to take the bumps and bruises, you don't want it bad enough that you're going to that you're willing to, to deal with and experience delay, you don't want it bad enough that you're willing to fight through the frustration and disappointment of it not happening how you want it to happen, when you want it to happen, you might as well lay it down and retreat back to your corner of comfort because that's what's you're not going to get it. You're going to have to be willing to fail in order to succeed. You're going to have to be willing to build your wall brick by brick by brick. It's, it's, it's that simple. You don't, you're not going to get it overnight. But if you build a brick or you, you, you build a, a, whatever modular function you want to, want to get that you, you, you can look at and say, okay, I stuck this here. That's my first piece. I, I, I put everything I into it. And that's the other thing. Every brick needs equal care. Every brick needs equal effort. Every brick needs equal um, engagement and standard of excellence. Every brick that you lay has to have your all. You need sweat equity in every brick. You can't just go up there and throw a brick down and then think you can build something solid on top of it. You need to place it exactly where it belongs. Put all your energy and effort in it and trust that at the end of the day, as you lay these bricks, that it's going to ultimately end up being this big, huge edifice that does everything you want it to do and provides you with the lifestyle you want, provides you with the impact you want, provides you with all that you envisioned and more. But you have to start understanding that you're going to have to use the compound factor. You're going to have to grow it from one brick. You're not going to walk out there and say, I want to be a millionaire and look up and you've got these zero extra zeros in your bank account. You're going to have to say, I'm going to take this $5. And, I, and, and, and instead of blowing it on chips and hamburgers or instead of blowing it on, 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 on a lottery ticket, I'm going to take it and I'm going to buy me a notebook. And in this notebook, I'm going to start pouring out my mind on this page. And, and, and with each thing that I put on this page, I'm going to build out from it. 
and then I'm going to find a way to take that and turn that into a profit in some way by serving somebody, by planting a seed. There's something. Hold on. I'm going to get on. I know I'm going over. But check this out. And then I'm done. You know, uh, uh, whether you are a spiritual person or religious person or what, there is this idea of karma. There's this idea of planting. There's this idea of sowing. And uh, a lot of people ask me when dealing with people of the Christian faith specifically, why is it that Christians are so emphatic and entrenched in their faith, but when you look at it on paper, nobody's struggling and suffering more uh, when you look at it on paper. And I say it's because they are caught up in the mysticism and the idea of God instead of understanding the power they have because of God. And so they spend a lot of time praying and no time working. Now, you know, there's this belief that if I just ask for it, if I claim it, it's mine. No, you claim it, then you go after it. You see, so you, 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 you're wearing holes in your knees, but you're not putting in the work. Uh, put, put the holes in your knees because, see, there's something to be said for the time you spent in communion with God, whether you're a Christian and you pray or whether you're a Buddhist and you meditate, you're in communion with the consciousness of the universe, which in essence is God, and you are communicating. But it takes action. You got to get up off your knees and put in the work. You got to get up and you got to put in the work. You got to be consistent with what you say you want. So that, 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 that's that thing. I'm, I, all right. I've got the universe that understands. See, the universe, God, life, however you want to look at it, will only meet you at the level of your expectations. Your communication is telling the universe, is telling God, hey, this is what I expect from my life. But if you truly expect that, where's the work? Where's the work that is uh, representative of what you say you want? Where's the, rep where, where's the work that's representative of what you say you desire? Where's the work that's representative of what you say you deserve? Uh, God hears you. You, it, 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 that's out there. But the, see, the thing is, it's not his job to do it for you. It's his job to ordain it. It's his job to co-sign it. It's his job to validate it. It's your job to go out there and put in the work. And yes, compound factor. You're not going to get it overnight. It's not going to just lay down for you. It's not just going to pop up and, oh, my God, I went from zero to a million in, in a month. Stop watching those darn gone videos that tell you you just click a button and you're going to be rich on the Internet. No, you're going to have to put in work. But the thing is, all the people I've studied started with zilch. I don't study people who were born with silver spoons in their mouths. I can't relate to them. I wasn't born with one. But I can relate to a person that started with the world against them and, and just decided this is not the life I want and worked. And it didn't happen overnight. But you know what? Compound factor. I'm gonna grow it. I'm gonna build this. I'm gonna build this wall. I'm gonna put this brick right here, and I, I'm gonna make this brick the most perfect uh, brick, or this wall, or this 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 block, or, 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 or this segment, or whatever. It's gonna be perfect, or as close to perfect as I can get it. And then I'm gonna give it everything I got. Then I'm gonna build another one. I'm gonna put another one. I'm gonna put another one. And I'm gonna take time and energy and effort. I don't see anything in my life that I'm building as insignificant. So everything that I see, that I do, that I say, that I think, that I entertain has to be considered significant. So I don't have casual time. I don't kill time. When you kill time, you kill your dream. So you gotta start saying, I'm going to invest in myself by failing to kill time. Now that's a hard one because there's so many damn ways you can kill time now. What are you investing in? What are you spending your time in? What are you thinking about? Make every, every second count. That don't mean spend all of your day in front of your work, but make sure that the time you spend has a purpose. You know, when I say don't kill time, people say, well, you just wake up every morning, you do your work. No, you wake up every morning and you put as much into your, 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 your purpose, your passion, your dream as you can. And you find some time to regenerate. And that regeneration will not be your work. It will be away from your work. It will be, maybe you need to read a book. I read every day. You, maybe you need to watch a video. I do that every day. Maybe you need to talk to a friend who can lift you. I married mine. All of these different things are part of the process. They're not killing time. They're an investment. There's an investment in everything you do. That's the thing that you've got to be able to do is invest in every second. 
even when it comes to recreation. The recreation is a part of producing the proper hormones and chemical balance in your brain that keeps you on a high energy level. The dopamine, the serotonin, that comes from recreation, that comes from enjoying some things in life and, and, and taking some time. That's not killing time, that's an investment. But when you're just sitting around laying around and you can't, you can't give any good reason of what you're getting out of it, any good explanation of what you're getting out of it, you're killing time. The compound factor. That's what I want you to really focus on is that if you just keep laying those bricks, if you just keep waking up every day and doing something, it's going to produce. Now, now, now back to my Christian people, you ought to be able to understand this. And, and my Buddhists understand it as karma. Whatever, however you look at it, check this out. Uh, there's a part that there's a verse in the Bible that I absolutely love. It says that God is not mocked. Hmm. What a man sows, he reaps. That's not just in the fields. That's in his thoughts. That's in his behavior. That's in his actions. What a man sows, he reaps. You can pray all day, but if you're not sowing, you're not going to reap. You can beg all day, but if you're not sowing, you're not going to reap. You can dream all day, but if you're not sowing, you're not going to reap. And then you can't get out there sowing negativity, expecting positivity. So a lot of people out there put way too much energy in hoping for the demise of other people instead of investing in themselves. Oh, yeah, I, I, I study behavior. So I'm watching everything and seeing everything all day long. I'm looking at it. The, there are people out there that the vast majority of what they post on social media is indirect assaults on someone else's vision, someone else's dream, someone else's idea of success, or someone else, period. You're losing a lot of your energy and a lot of your momentum by attacking someone else instead of taking the time to work on self. Yeah, I know this is way beyond five minutes. Talk it up to me. I'm, I'm eventually going to get this five-minute thing down, I promise. It's going to take some time because I flow with momentum. I follow my energy, and it's real difficult to just box something in. I never operate out of boxes. So I'm, I'm working on it, though. I'm working on it. But like I said, if you haven't gotten the book Critical Mass, if you haven't ordered it, you need to order it before uh, – the release because at the release is going to go up to uh, the, re the the common retail price, which is higher. Uh, but like I said, I've been adding to it. I, last night alone, I sat down and I added an entire chapter, in, and there's an entire new segment in it on quantum physics, the universe, and the mind, and it explains the law of attraction in a way that I don't think it's really been done yet. Some guys have done some great jobs on it, and I've just tried to stand on their shoulders and build out. But it's explained in a very exoteric way that should uh, provide a lot of clarity and show you how your thoughts are literally creating your destiny. Um, you know, uh, and so there's a segment in it that says the mind is your, your mind is the genesis of your destiny. But anyway, that's that. Get that book. Uh, but whatever you do, understand that you're going to build your success. One, 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 one step, one piece, one brick at a time. Uh, every now and then, you're going to hit a home run. Every now and then, you're going to get this massive gain. But it's going to be based on the momentum you build by being consistent and committed to building brick by brick. You're going to get these big jumps. And uh, most, so the people on the outside are going to say you were lucky. No, you were prepared. You were invested. You were committed. And that's what happens when people are invested, prepared, and committed. They get these big jumps, and people just love to explain it away as luck. Now, see, when you say it's luck, you, you don't have to account for the work ethic involved. When you say it's luck, you don't have to account for the hard work, commitment, the pain, the strain, the struggle, the push. When you say it's luck, you can just sit up and say, it just happened. No, it didn't just happen. They got up, and they put in the work. So when you finish praying, when you finish meditating, when you finish communing with, with the infinite uh, power and, uh, of the universe, get up and put in the work. Get up and put in the work. Get up and put in the work. With that being said, I'm out of here. As I always say, man, I'm going to live my life on full. I'm asking you to do the same thing. Live your life on full so that when you finally leave this place, you die on me. That's what I'm telling you. You have to be committed 
to leaving nothing behind but a legacy. What would your legacy say about you right now? What would you, if right now was your last day, what would your legacy say? If you're not happy with the legacy you would be leaving behind today, you got to start laying those bricks. You got to start building. You got to become committed. I would love to work with some of you guys. Um, but like I said, I'm only going to sit down and give my time to people who are totally committed and invested in themselves. But I would love to work with some of you guys, man. There's so much more out there that the world has to offer than what you are basking in right now. And I would love to show it to you. With that being said, I'm out of here. It is so much fun hollering at you guys in the morning. Uh, make something happen in your life. Don't wait on it to happen. Don't hope it happens. Don't wish it happens. Make it happen. That's the difference between successful people. Successful people wake up in the morning and they either find the right circumstance or the right opportunity, and if it doesn't exist, they create it. It's that simple. That's the difference. You want to know the difference? That's the difference. Yeah, uh, a lot of people are waiting on something to happen, and the people who are really living this life are making it happen. That's the difference. I'm out of here. You guys have a great one. Peace.